Hello shooters, this video today is going to be about the pros and cons of 1x4 scopes variables on AR type rifles. I've um, been running aim points, EOTEX on my ARs and uh, I like both of those scopes. One of the problems is my eyes are getting older along with the rest of me which sucks but uh, I'm finding that magnification actually helps in my older age then, uh, then it didn't really matter that much when I was a little bit younger. So what I first did is I got a primary arms 1x4 scope that I put on my AR just to test the concept. I liked what it did for me, but I knew it was a little bit slower on close range targets than it was for a red dot type scope. How much slower I didn't know because I hadn't timed it. But it worked close enough to where I stepped up and bought a Vortex 1x4 for my working gun. And then I put my primary arms 1x4 on my dedicated 22. Uh, this is a good scope for 22 particularly. Um, but there's a huge difference in the optics and in the usability of this 1x4 compared with the Vortex. I'm very pleased with the Vortex. Uh, I like the features that it has. Um, optics are much more clear, much more crisp, and they're more forgiving. And what I mean by that is there's a term called um, eye relief. And I didn't really know what eye relief means. I thought it meant just the distance from the eye to the objective lens, which is the big one back here. Um, but what I'm finding for me, it means more than that. It's more than just the distance, which is critical with a 1x4, but it's also the alignment. If um, a red dot scope is going to be more forgiving, if my head's off to one side or the other a little bit, with a red dot scope, I'll be able to pick up and use that dot and see through the scope, whereas with a 1x4, I have to get more right behind the scope. Now this scope, is more forgiving of eye relief than this scope is. This scope you have to be right behind the scope and you have to be at the proper distance from the scope. Uh, I think it's critical that if you have a, a powered scope on either an AR or an AK that you have an adjustable butt stock for adjustable length of pull because depending upon your shot you've got to get that critical eye distance and whether I'm wearing body armor or LBE or heavy winter clothes or if I'm in the prone the stock is going to have to change to meet those different needs and the only way you can do that is if it's adjusted. So this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to start with the 22 because it's got the, vor uh, the uh, primary arms on it. I'm going to do five shots, one single shots each with the beep. I'm going to come up and hit that clay bird right there. I'm going to repeat that five times and record each time. Beep, single shot, beep, single shot. Something like this. So, here we go. I don't know if you can see it, but I hit the clay bird. Gonna record the time. And we do that five times in a row from right shoulder, five times in a row left shoulder. Okay, we just finished right and left side standing. Now we're gonna move to barricade work. The reason we want to include barricade work is sometimes since you're in a different position. Your eye relief may change. Your body position is going to be changing as you're leaning out. We want to make sure we can still get in the scope and get that shot fast and accurate. We're using clay birds because they're about the size of a human headshot. On a two-way range, people don't stand there like a cardboard target waiting for you to shoot. They see cover just like we do, so your shot's going to be small and fleeting. Another caution, stay back away from cover. Don't crowd your cover. Make sure you stay behind cover. Don't chicken wing it. Drop your elbow down, expose the least money of your body to enemy fire. Left side barricade. Okay. 
We just finished five shots left side barricade. Now we're gonna do five shots right side barricade. Same drill, don't crowd cover, don't chicken wing it, keep it tucked in, expose the least amount of your body to enemy fire. Notice that I take my, the knee is the opposite side of cover. And if you do this, you'll most typically stick your knee outside cover there, and that'll provide a nice target to shoot at. So whatever side cover you're coming up upon, that's the knee you put down on the ground, it's the other knee that you put up. It's a little bit more awkward, but it works better. Keeps you behind, behind cover better. Now we're going to do an exact repeat of those drills, but only using the red dot sight. We're going to do five standing left and right side, five barricade left and right side and I'll be uh, posting the times. We're finished up with the PA 1x4 and also the aim point. Now we're gonna move on to the Vortex 1x4. We're gonna do the exact same drills as before. Five right hand standing, five left hand standing, five right barricade, five left Okay, shooters back from the range. Um, testing the Vortex 1x4, the primary arms 1x4 against a red dot scope. Um, let's go over some of the numbers here and uh, see if we can come to any conclusions. I have definitely come to my own conclusion. I want you to reach your own through trying this yourself if you have the opportunity to run a couple of different scopes. But uh, let's go over the numbers and I'll share with you my thoughts. We started standing right side and uh, all these tests were done at 25 yards. I didn't put it on this page. But let's go over these. Started with the primary arms one by four. Um, you can review the shot times here with a total of 7.89, an average 1.58. The red dot sight, interestingly enough, with the red dot sight, I posted my fastest time and also I posted the slowest time. Um, total, the average, the vortex one by four total and average. In other words, standing, right shoulder, there's really no difference between the three when shooting at the clay pigeon at 25 yards. This is mostly a training, a, a training issue. Uh, I train a lot. My strong side is my strong side, obviously. And uh, times are, you know, pretty consistent across the board. Uh, got some aberrations on each one. But uh, now let's go to left side, which is not my strong side. Left side, you can see, here's where it starts. This is because with the left side, I have trouble finding the sweet spot in the, the primary arms one by four. That eye relief, that critical eye relief of the distance between the eye and the scope, but also the alignment is, uh, it shows up here. A total of 9.06, an average of 1.81. Red dot scope. Uh, left side is faster <laughs> than my right side. But notice on my right side, I had this 1.81. I don't have anything over 1.7 when I shot left side. But uh, that's what I got and with an average of 1.5 seconds per shot. Vortex is not far behind. Um, it's easier. The Vortex is more forgiving with the eye alignment and the eye distance. And, uh, and here's the differences here. 1.81 to 1.50. 1.69. Let's contrast that with the left side just so we're... With the Vortex, I am you know, pretty dang close to being as fast with the red dot at 25 yards. Pacific Arms, particularly left-handed, shows where I'm having trouble getting that critical eye distance and eye alignment. Okay, let's, let's, let's move on to the barricades. Barricade left side is what we did first. Um, you can see the times are quite a bit slower. 
with the uh, primary arms uh, almost 15 second total 13 second total 12 second total I did the fastest with the vortex again uh, the reticle of vortex is is really really nice it allows for really fast target acquisition and uh, breaking the shot 2.98 2.60 2.4 left side barricade let's go to right side barricade again the eye relief is what slowed me down with the primary arms uh, with the red dot and the vortex you know there is some there's a measurable difference but I don't know if there's a practical difference now let's look at uh, both of them put together left side right side obviously I need to work more on my right side if I'm running the, the primary arms um, I'm quite a bit faster from the right side going around the barricade standing up you know it's not that big a deal but there's a there's a there's a big difference left side versus right side even with the the uh, red dot in the vortex so that shows me I need to practice more left side barricade that's one of the benefits of doing this type of training and so here's the right side barricade which we all which we already went over red dot and vortex are neck and neck now after I put the video equipment away I uh, I decided to do one last test I did one shot each at 50 yards uh, sitting to shoot the clay pigeon now these shots I didn't make them as fast as I possibly could I made them when I knew 100 percent I could hit the target so I want to make a distinction there if there was a full silhouette of 50 yards and a guy a guy charging me you know I wouldn't have had to take in the time that I took to guarantee to hit the clay pigeon at 50 yards and here's the times you know this is on, on four power the primary arms the vortex scopes were on four power and the primary arms I broke the clay at 2.31 the red dot 4.59 the vortex 2.01 um, right shoulder my strongest side the shot the side I'd use if I had to make a shot to uh, to hit ahead at 50 yards so there's this does show how the farther out you get or the smaller the target the magnification of the powered scope really does come into play and is a is a is a big benefit so there's the numbers okay shooters uh, we just reviewed the numbers and uh, and for my needs and my purposes I like the vortex 1x4 scope I think it offers advantages to me that the aim point doesn't and that it is has the ability to bring targets closer when they're farther away and also it doesn't slow me down much at all on the on the short game the close game uh, I encourage you to do these types of tests on your own get out there and train time yourself so you can study the data you'll find out where your weaknesses are so you can turn those weaknesses into strengths appreciate you watching if you have any questions or comments please post them below I'll do my best to answer them. Be safe. Have a good day.